What if everything we thought we knew was wrong? For over a century, Neanderthals have been cast in shadow, lumbering brutes, alone in the ice, their lives short, violent, simple. But beneath the frozen earth of a Siberian cave, a secret waited. Shagerskaya, a name few outside the field had ever heard. A place buried by time, by ice, by silence. And then bones, tiny fragments, scattered like echoes of lives once lived. Among them, a child's tooth, worn by time, a sliver of a father's jaw. To most, nothing more than fossils. But in 2022, something extraordinary happened. Scientists drew ancient DNA from these bones, and the impossible became clear. A teenage girl, and beside her, encoded in the strands of ancient blood, her father. A family, locked in time for 54,000 years. Not myth, not imagination. A father, a daughter together. What does this tell us about them, and about us? Were they not creatures of isolation, but of love, of kinship? Did they grieve their dead? Did they laugh around flickering firelight? Did they dream? For the first time, science pierced through the veil, and what it saw was human. The girl's bones whispered more than her name. They whispered of family ties, of migration, of bonds deeper than survival. Neanderthals, not the beasts of old textbooks, but people who held their daughters close. And if they lived as families, what else about their story has been lost, buried in ice and time? If you're fascinated by lost histories and ancient DNA mysteries, subscribe for more untold stories. But this was only the beginning, because the world outside that cave was cold, brutal, unforgiving. And one haunting question remains. How could such a fragile family survive in this frozen world? A cave, carved by ice, shaped by wind, forgotten by time. Shagerskaya, a name once lost on the map of human memory. Hidden deep in the Altai Mountains of Siberia, where winter never fully releases its grip and silence weighs heavy. For thousands of years, this cave stood empty, its entrance sealed by snow, its story untold. Until now, in its frozen heart, a secret waited. Not one skeleton, not scattered fragments from distant centuries, but something unheard of thirteen Neanderthals, all from a single moment in time. Eight adults, five children, a community, a family, their bones, more than eighty fragments, woven into the cave floor like whispers of the lives they led, and surrounding them, a staggering ninety thousand tools, flint blades, scrapers, spear points, crafted by hands long turned to dust. This was no place of death alone. This was a hunting camp, a gathering place, a home, if only for a season. Bison, horse, ibex, their bones piled among the stones proof of feasts beneath flickering firelight. And as the scientists sifted through layers of earth, the realization struck. This was not a random collection of fossils. This was a living community. A father. A daughter. Cousins, perhaps. Kin. A moment frozen in time. But as the snow drifted outside, and ancient genomes began to speak, one deeper question echoed through the cave's cold corridors. Why here? Why now? Why this family, in this place, at this exact moment in prehistory? Not all ghosts live in the dark. Some live in the blood, inside each bone. Each tooth unearthed from Shagerskaya Cave, ancient code remained. A fragile spiral of life, twisted, broken, yet still speaking. And when scientists began to listen, the whispers grew louder. It started with a spark, a sequence, unexpected, too close, too familiar. A teenage girl, her fragile bones untouched by time's forgetting, and in her DNA a mirror, a father, confirmed, not cousin, not uncle, not stranger, a father, and his daughter, entwined by blood, across 54,000 years, the first ever seen in the fossil record of our ancient kin, and the revelations did not stop there. The genome spoke again, a second-degree connection, a boy, an adult woman aunt and nephew, cousins. No one can yet say for certain, but the patterns were unmistakable, a family tree rising from the ice. And through the mother's line, another whisper, mitochondrial heteroplasmy, a rare genetic flicker, shared between the father and two other men, proof of a shared maternal ancestor, a grandmother, perhaps.
whose face no stone has recorded, whose voice no story has preserved, yet her blood, still flowing in the fragments. Now, for the first time, we can hear their family ties, a father's love, a daughter's life cut short, a network of kinship stretched across this cold, forgotten world. But in that silence, another question stirs. What kind of society held them together? Or worse, what force may have torn them apart? The deeper the genome was read, the smaller their world became. Not a bustling tribe, not a wide-spanning clan. Ten, perhaps twenty souls. That was all. A fragile circle, huddled beneath ancient stone, bound not just by kinship, but by necessity. Their DNA told a stark truth. Runs of homozygosity, long unbroken. Signs of deep inbreeding. The kind seen today only in the last remaining mountain gorillas, or creatures teetering at the edge of extinction. And yet they lived. Year after year, through the brutal Siberian winters, their camp, not permanent but returning. Season after season, they followed the herds. Bison, horse, ibex, their blood traced across the snow, the hunt driving life forward, through icy river valleys, beneath skies thick with storm. Firelight flickering in the cave, spears drying by stone walls. Laughter, stories, grief. Because in such a small world, every life mattered. Every loss, a fracture in the heart of the tribe. And yet, loyalty held them close. Isolation bred love, even as it bred fragility. Each birth a chance, each death a wound. And the genome whispered another truth. They were already on a knife's edge. Too few. Too close, too vulnerable, and still they endured. For thousands of years, these tiny bands of kin held on, deep in the cold heart of Eurasia. But the question burns, how? How did such fragile threads, woven so tightly, not snap beneath the weight of time? How did they survive for millennia? Not all footsteps leave a mark on stone. Some are written in blood, as scientists map the ancient genomes. Another pattern began to shimmer beneath the surface. A strange imbalance. The Y chromosomes, nearly identical. The mitochondrial DNA, far more varied. A contradiction, waiting to be understood. And then it came clear. The men had stayed. Generation after generation. Sons born beneath the same cave roof. Hunting the same valleys. Buried beneath the same earth. But the women, the women had moved. From other valleys, other clans their bloodlines crossing frozen rivers, forging fragile connections between isolated groups. Patrilocal society, a term for it now. But for them, it was life. And for the teenage girl, her story lies half-told. Her father's bones found. Her own remains preserved. But her mother missing. Not a trace in the cave. Not a shard of bone. Not a whisper in the soil. Did she come from another clan, far beyond the mountains? Did she walk alone, through snow and wind, to join this family of strangers? Or was she taken, traded, given away, as ancient alliances demanded? In her daughter's DNA, her legacy endures, but her face, her fate, remains in shadow. And the question rises from the ice. Were these wandering women free? Or were their journeys, written by a deeper law, once shaped by survival itself? Was this migration a choice? or a necessity no one could escape. Not all enemies carry spears. Some are too small to see. For years, the bones from Shagerskaya whispered only of family, of love, of survival. But then a darker voice emerged. Deep within the genetic code, scientists uncovered something unexpected. Fragments. Viral DNA. Etched into the very marrow of ancient bones. Herpes virus. Adenovirus. Papillomavirus. Pathogens, older than memory itself. Silent hitchhikers, carried in blood and breath, long before the first words were ever spoken. Viruses, humanity's oldest adversaries. And here they were, haunting the DNA of a Neanderthal child. Proof that even in this small, fragile tribe, sickness was an unseen shadow. A single cough, a shared cup, a moment of care, and the sickness would spread. No medicine, no cure. No chance to fight what could not be seen. And as the tribe gathered in the cave, huddled close for warmth, for comfort, so too did the enemy move among them. A mother comforting a fevered child. 
a father watching helpless as life faded from his daughter's eyes. Even love could not protect him, and the deeper the researchers looked, the clearer it became. This was no isolated event. Perhaps, across the frozen expanse of Eurasia, waves of sickness rose and fell, striking down small, isolated bands again and again. A whisper of pandemics, long before the word existed. Invisible, relentless, unstoppable. But in truth, these ancient viruses were only part of a story, because the deadliest threat this family faced was already written in their bones, and the real danger came from within. Not all traps are made of stone or bone. Some are hidden in the blood. When the scientists peered deeper into the Neanderthal genome, past the stories of fathers and daughters, past the whispers of ancient viruses, they found something stranger still. Long, unbroken stretches of DNA. Runs of homozygosity. At first glance, just a technical term. But what it meant was far more chilling. These were genetic fingerprints of inbreeding. Deep. Repeated generation after generation, within a tribe too small to escape its own bloodlines. The math told the truth. Among the men shared ancestors, within just 450 years, a blink in evolutionary time. Not distant cousins, but kin, bound too closely for too long. And here, the old myths collapse. These were not brutish creatures, doomed by their minds. They were people, trapped by isolation. The Altai Mountains, vast, unforgiving. Between each small band, days, weeks of frozen travel. Hints of trading networks flicker in the archaeological record. Stone tools, matching those from distant caves. Proof they tried. They reached out, sought new blood, new life. But it was not enough. The ice was too deep. The distances too great. The numbers too few. And so the trap tightened. Each birth carried the weight of what came before. Hidden flaws, once rare, began to surface. Silent mutations, weaknesses, a fragile future, written in the very code of life. And the question haunts us still, was it this genetic fragility that sealed their fate? The ice remembers what the maps forgot. For centuries, the story of Neanderthals was written as one of stasis. Small, isolated, trapped in their corners of the world. But then, the genome spoke again. And what they revealed shattered that myth. The Neanderthals of Shagaskaya, their blood told a different tale. A lineage, not of local recluses, but of travelers. Their closest genetic kin were not the ancient Altai Neanderthals of Denisova, just kilometers away, but clans far to the west. Europe, thousands of kilometers across frozen plains, dense forests, mountain ranges. Somehow, they had made the journey. An eastward migration spanning three, maybe four thousand kilometers. A human tide, moving with the seasons, with the herds, with hopes carried in each footfall. And the proof wasn't just in their DNA. It was etched in stone. Mycoquian tools, flint blades, crafted with precision, identical to those found across Europe. Carried east, by skilled hands, generation after generation. This was no stagnant world. It was dynamic, connected, Alive with movement, a lineage that once thrived, adapting, migrating, enduring. But as the centuries passed, something changed. The genetic signatures began to thin. The connections fray. The vibrant pulse of these eastward migrants began to fade. And now, their bones lie silent beneath Siberian stone. The last echoes of a journey that spanned continents. But one question still lingers, sharp as ice in the wind. What finally caused their world to collapse? For decades, the story was simple. A slow decline. Neanderthals, fading quietly, replaced by us, Homo sapiens. But the newest evidence tells a far darker tale. In 2025, advanced genomic analysis rewrote the ending. The extinction was not slow. It was sudden, brutal. A population crash, swift, catastrophic. Not over millennia but in a flash of evolutionary time. Why? The signs were already written in their blood. Isolation. Inbreeding. Fragile bodies. Already trapped by shrinking gene pools. Then the world changed. The climate shifted. Temperatures swung violently. The great herds moved, or vanished. And in their frozen valleys, the Neanderthals were left behind. Too few. 
too scattered, and unlike Homo sapiens, whose larger, more connected networks allowed ideas, tools, genes to flow freely across continents, the Neanderthals stood alone. Each band, each fragile family, an island, cut off by ice, by distance, by dwindling numbers. When the collapse came, there was no rescue, no reinforcements, no escape. And so, the last fires flickered out. Not because they were less intelligent, not because they were weak. In the end, they were not inferior, simply too fragile. But here is the strangest truth of all. Though their bodies are gone, their blood is not. Two percent of their legacy lives on. In us. In you. In me. And the question that haunts the edges of science remains, what else of them still lies hidden inside us? One face is still missing. In the father's bones, in the daughter's fragile remains, their story has begun to emerge. But her mother, the other half of this ancient bond, is absent. No bone. No tooth. No trace in the cave. And so, the family portrait remains unfinished. A mother whose voice, whose bloodline, whispers only through her child's genome. For now a shadow. But the search is not over. Far beneath the ice and stone, Shagerskaya still holds its secrets. Because even now, more than two-thirds of the cave remains untouched. A maze of unexcavated chambers, layers of time, waiting. Every brushstroke of soil, every new fragment, could be the one, could be her. And so, the scientists return, again and again, driven by something more than data, more than discovery, by the oldest pull of all, the human need to complete the story, to find her, to give this ancient family its full voice. But will we ever hear it? Will her bones, her DNA, her truth, ever be brought to light? And beyond this cave, far beyond, what other voices still sleep beneath the earth? What new DNA secrets? Still wait in the shadows.